So some of you might remember this effect from my intro to shaders video that I put out last year. If you haven't watched that video, I recommend watching it. It goes over a lot of what shaders are and how they work, which I won't really be covering in much detail again. And here is our excitable little ghost friend again. Uh, he has once again volunteered very bravely to be the guinea pig for this tutorial. Uh, we're going to be drawing a single pixel outline around him, uh, just using a very simple shader. Uh, he's just an object with uh, with a sprite, just plonked him in the middle of the room, zoomed in a bit. Um, and that, that's all I've got going on here. One thing you will need to do um, if you're doing an outline around a sprite using this method is you need to make sure there's room in your sprite to be able to do so. Um, so you'll notice um, in here like I've got loads of like excess space around it. I've got more than I need really. You only need one pixel um, free just at the top. Otherwise you'll find your outline gets cut off because you need that space. Now Game Maker by default um, actually automatically trims sprites like this down on your texture page to save space, all right? It actually does that for you and crops it away, but we want to not do that for this specific sprite. So make sure, you're, first of all, you go to Tools, Texture Groups, find um, find the texture group that has your particular sprite in it, so this is, a, uh, this is our ghost sprite, and make sure you've got automatically crop unticked, okay? I've already done that but um, it will be ticked by default, so make sure you or you untick that so that it does not automatically crop. So the first thing we're going to do is actually write the shader that we're going to use, okay? So I'm going to right click in shaders and hit create and it'll set you up with a, a default shader and it's already got a bunch of code in the vertex and in the fragment side of it, okay? You'll get it, it'll split into two tabs like this, one is, and it's comment at the top pretty clearly, the vertex shader and the other is the fragment shader. Okay, you don't need to worry about the vertex shader at all, okay? Just ignore this. Um, we just want it to behave how it normally would and just pass through all the, the vertices and coordinates to our fragment shader. Our fragment shader controls rendering every single pixel um, in, in our sprite, okay? So this is where we actually want to make the change where we draw the outline around the sprite. So we've already got a basic fragment shader set up here that literally just takes the coordinates and takes the appropriate colors and just draws them to the screen, right? This just draws things as standard. And this is what we want to modify in order to make it so instead of just drawing things as standard, we draw them in a slightly different way that draws an outline around the little ghost, okay? The first thing we want to do is we want to pass over a couple of variables from outside the shader, so from GameMaker, into the shader. Um, I'll explain what these variables are and why we need them a little bit later. But for now, um, and this is the easiest way just to sort of bring a variable across into a shader, so I'm going to type uniform float, okay? This is how I declare a floating point variable in the shader, floating point just being like a real number to kind of oversimplify, <laughs> okay? So a decimal point number. Um, and that float is going to be called pixel h for pixel height, okay, and I'll kind of you'll see what I'm doing with that in a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing underneath, and float pixel w. One thing I should note when you're writing shaders as well, very important to always include the semicolon. Um, your game won't compile if you miss a semicolon on a sh uh, in a shader script, okay? Whereas you get away with that in other scripts in Game Maker, you can't in the shader scripts, okay? So you might think of this area up here as kind of the declaration area of your little shader program, and this is the actual function itself, this area inside void main, okay? This is the actual, um, the actual script that's being run once we've declared all our different variables and so on. Um, we want to leave this bit at the bottom that determines like the final color of this particular pixel that we're drawing to the screen, right? Uh, so leave that bit there at the bottom for now. Um, and at the top here, what I'm going to do is um, declare another couple of variables, actually. Um, I'm going to type vec2 offset x, okay? And that's declaring a two uh, a vector with two components, so in this case an x and a y component. And I'm going to type offset x dot x to equal pixel w. What these variables, I should probably just say, what these variables are is basically working out um, the width of a pixel in terms of our texture page. You might think, well, what's the difference, right? But when you're dealing with texture pages and your shaders, um, you don't measure things in pixels. You measure them in what's called texels, right? Which is like, um, if like one is a pixel, like 0.01 might be a pixel in texel form, if you know what I mean. Um, 
we were you, you're sort of talking like a percentage of the textures uh, the texture page rather than um just like one unit of pixel across because it doesn't necessarily know the kind of exact width and height and pixels and all that um and then the thing underneath i'm going to do is type vec2 offset y semicolon and then offset y dot y equal pixel h uh, now you might think, well, why didn't I just do offset x or just offset dot x and offset dot y? Why have I made two different um, two-part vectors with one of them being empty? So like the y component of this one is zero and the x component of this one's just going to be zero. Why haven't I just put them in the same one? Well, that's just to make it easier for me to add um, add these values um, to the other values that I'm going to do in a minute. Um, it'll hopefully become clear. So the next thing I want to do is make another float variable here um, called alpha equals texture 2D GM base texture. Um, oh, I sent an underscore. I was wondering why that didn't change color. Uh, v underscore V text chord, uh, close bracket, dot A. Okay, so what, what on earth is this, right? Um, this is basically finding, given our current texture coordinate, so basically the pixel we're currently drawing, right? It's gonna find the alpha of that pixel, okay? So and that's what we're putting in here. The transparency of the pixel we're currently drawing. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to that pixel the alpha of every pixel around it, okay? So the pixel above it, the pixel to the left of it, the pixel to the right of it, and the pixel below it. We're gonna add that alpha value to the current pixel. So if you think about it, whenever a pixel is next to another pixel that is non-zero alpha, uh, that will get added to this one. Okay, which will then result in us having an outline around the sprite. So. In order to do that, I'm going to type alpha plus equal seal. And if you remember, seal takes uh, any value and rounds it up to the nearest integer. Okay, so any alpha of like 0 0.4 or whatever, um, it's going to round that to 1. Texture 2D. Uh, oh, yeah, I wonder what. Yeah, this is wrong as well. It needs capital D there. Texture 2D with capital D. Uh, GM. Underscore base texture v underscore v text chord uh, plus offset x. Okay, so that's taking a current coordinate, which is a um, a vector two, right, and adding our offset x, which is a vector two, which is a uh, one and zero, right. Remember, offset y is zero and one, and you can see how this is going to be useful because uh, oh, that's dot a as well. So take the alpha, okay, semicolon. You see how this is gonna be useful because I'm gonna copy and paste this three more times like that underneath. And now I'm basically gonna do, once we've added offset x, that's uh, adding one zero, so that's one pixel to the right. If we subtract that, that's one pixel to the left. If we add offset y, that's one pixel below. And if we subtract offset y, that's one pixel above, okay? So one pixel above left and right. Um, we still don't know exactly how big a pixel is, but we're going to get that from the ghost object when we're finished, okay? Okay, and at the bottom here, we want to keep this the same. So we still want to make our color the color it should be based on the texture, based on the sprite, right? But we also want to set uh, the alpha of this current pixel to be the alpha we've just worked out from this little computation, okay? So we're going to do that by saying gl underscore frag color dot a okay so get the alpha component of our color equals alpha and that's really all there is to it that is the entire fragment shader that's the shader that will draw our outline now unfortunately this isn't just a simple matter of calling the shader and then resetting the shader when we draw our ghost um, we need to actually send these values uh, these two values here are pixel h and pixel w the, the width and height of the texel, if you will, across to the shader. So we'll go into our ghost object now and go into the create event, because we only need to grab these once, really, and type u pixel, uh, u pixel h equals shader get uniform uh, 
Oh, yeah, we need to actually name the shader as well. Let's call it sh outline. Sh outline uh, pixel h. Okay, so that basically what this does is it has GML reach into the shader code and work out uh, where this variable is. Um, and then puts it into this particular variable, okay? So that then we can use this variable to set uh, this variable inside the shader. And we do the same thing with the width. So u pixel w equals shader get uniform shut outline pixel w. Okie doke. Um, and then what do we actually want to put in those? Well, let's get a couple of new variables to actually put those things in. Let's go um, uh, tw, um, we'll, we'll put texel w even, might be better. Texture, get texel width, uh, sprite, get texture, sprite, index, zero. Okay, so that was kind of a lot of stuff and we can't even see the whole line. Let's bring that out a bit, there we go. Um, so as you can see here, we can't just get it from the sprite, we have to get it from the texture page that the sprite has been put on, because the sprite, um, all four, like the little animation that sprite will be put like in a row on a little texture page. Um, I might put up an image here so you can see what the texture page actually looks like, um, versus you know how we see it as a sprite here. Um, and that gets the gets the actual idea of that texture, the idea of that texture even, and um, works out how wide it is, how wide a texel is for that. So then we need to do the same thing for the height. So texture, get texel, height, sprite, get texture, sprite, index, zero. Okay, so let's actually draw our ghost to the screen now. So add event, add the draw event. Uh, first of all, we want to turn the shader on. So type shader set sure outline, um, and that's it. So we've replaced our normal drawing routine with um, with this shader instead. So we're going to use that to draw, um, and then we just need to set those two variables um, to whatever they should be on this particular frame. So shader set uniform f u uh, pixel W, texel, W. Okay, I have to do this after the shader is actually set um, because this is going to set the variable of the currently active shader. Okay, so I can't really do this before calling the shader. So once the shader is actually set, shader set uniform F. Okay, uniform F standing for uniform floats, those um, variables that we defined in the texture itself a minute ago. U pixel h, texel h. Okay, that's those two variables set. Then we draw the ghost itself just by using draw self. Uh, and then we just reset the shader back to normal. Shader reset. Okay, um, that's all there is to it. So if I press F5 now, remember our ghost before didn't have an outline around him, and now he does. He has a single little one pixel line around them. That's how you create a really simple pixel shader. If you're working with pixel art at two times scale, so say like this 32 by 32, like if you're working with pixels that are actually like two by two blocks, um, you can still get this shader to work. Um, in here, what you want to do is like multiply this by two. Um, and you'll find it actually works and creates like a, a two pixel Border. It'll look a bit weird. <laughs> It'll look a bit weird on this because it's only a uh, it's only a one x uh, scale piece of pixel art. But that will then actually make this work pretty cleanly for two times scale pixel art. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found that one useful. I've had a lot of new patron supporters over the last few days, which has been super super cool and really encouraging to see. Um, you might not be in the credits for this video if you've only recently become my patron. I do that stuff at the start of every month, but you'll be there going forwards. Um, thank you very, very much. And extra special shout outs to Dan, Angel Rodriguez, Harold Guidry, and Jason McMillan. Thank you all very much for your continued support. And I'll catch you guys next week when we'll be carrying on with our platformer series. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.